Hello, Junior Church. I hope this finds you doing well and healthy. It's been great to see many of you back here at the church uh, for services. And for those who have been coming, I hope that you will continue to come. And for those who haven't made it back yet for safety reasons, I hope that you're doing well and that you're safe. I continue to pray for all of you. And again, I look forward to the day when we can all gather back here at the church. I hope you're looking forward to that day as well. Last few times we were together, I want to remind you that Moses was up on Mount Sinai. And Moses was receiving from God some instructions for how to build the tabernacle. He was receiving uh, from God instructions for what the priests were to wear when they were working in the tabernacle, the clothing. And he also, you talked about this with Brother Charles, received from God the Ten Commandments and many other commandments. And today we're going to look at what the Israelites were doing when Moses was up on the mountain. And we'll find that it wasn't good. Uh, but before we talk about that, let's spend some time asking the Lord's blessing upon our lesson today. Father, I do want to thank you uh, for your goodness. I thank you, Lord, that you are a good God, that you do provide for us, that you do protect us, Lord. And I pray that you forgive us, Lord, for all the times where we forget about that. And I pray that today's lesson would be used in a way to encourage us, Father, to, to praise you for who you are. It would encourage us, Father, to, to continue to serve you all the days of our life, Lord. And it would help us to be all that you would have us to be as believers, Lord. You are a good God. And I pray that you would direct our attention up to you today, Lord. Help us to pay attention, not to be silly, Lord, not to uh, do anything, Father, that would distract um, ourselves and others, Father, from what you have for us today. And I pray, Lord, that you would help us not just to be hearers of this word, but doers. And so we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So the last few lessons, as I just mentioned, Moses was up on Mount Sinai and he was talking with God. And while he was up on Mount Sinai, he was up there for several days, the people of Israel began to wonder what was going on and where he was. Again, it had been a while since they had seen Moses, and Moses had been up on the mountain for a while, and they were starting to question what was going on. So if you'll grab your Bibles, we're going to look at this. Uh, turn to Exodus chapter 32. Exodus chapter 32. And if you remember, the book of Exodus is the second book of the Bible, so if you turn to the front of your Bible and go uh, just a couple books into the Bible, you'll find the book of Exodus hopefully really easily. And we're going to be in Exodus chapter 32. And while you're turning there, let me just remind you, uh, hopefully you have your Bible in front of you. Uh, can I just stress how important that is that you read this for yourself in the Bible, that you don't just take my word for it. So hopefully you do have your Bible, and if you do, hopefully that you have found your place there in Exodus chapter 32. Let's look in verse 1. Exodus chapter 32, verse 1. It says, And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron, and said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we want not what is become of him. So here we see that the people started to wonder what was going on with Moses. Where was Moses? And instead of just waiting upon God and trusting that Moses was okay and that Moses was doing what he was supposed to be doing, the Israelites began to think things like this. They started to say, where is he? Why is it taking so long for him to come down? Maybe something happened to him. Maybe God killed him. Well, if God killed him, what are we going to do now? Who is going to lead us? And because of all this grumbling, they went to Aaron. And because of all these questions, they went to Aaron and they asked Aaron and they said, Aaron... We want you to make us gods. Now think about this for a moment. Again, Israel had seen God do such great things in their life. God had provided for them when they needed food. God had provided for them when they needed water. God had kept them safe from any enemies that came out against them. And now they're wanting to turn their back on God and serve some made-up God. And they came to Aaron, and they, and they brought their request to Aaron, and they said, we want you to make us a god. Now, Aaron was a leader. Aaron was the one that God chose to help Moses lead the people of Israel. Aaron here should have said, no. How crazy is this that you want, us to, you want me to make you gods after the God that we serve brought us out of Egypt and protected us and kept us safe? No, I'm not going to make gods. Maybe Aaron should have reminded them what it said in uh, the Ten Commandments. 
In fact, let me just read you what it says in Exodus chapter 20. You talked about this again a couple weeks ago. Exodus chapter 20, verse 3 says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Aaron should have reminded the people that, hey, God told us that we aren't to have any other gods before him. We aren't to make any gods, but that's not what Aaron did. Sadly, Aaron gave in. Let's look what it says here in verse 2. It says, And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. And listen carefully to what it says here in verse 4. We'll talk about this a little bit later in the lesson. And he, and he being Aaron, Aaron received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it a molten calf. So here in verse 4, we see that Aaron told the people to take their golden earrings and bring them unto him. And the Bible says here in verse 4 that he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it a molten calf. So he fashioned their golden earrings into a molten calf. Aaron made a God for Israel to serve. Aaron was the one that made this golden calf. And again, that'll be important as we continue in our lesson. But let me just remind you again how crazy this is. In fact, look at what it says here again in verse 4. It says, And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Did you catch that? Was it this golden calf that brought them out of the house of bondage? Or was it God? That brought them out of the house of bondage. And hopefully you're saying without a doubt that it was God that brought them out of the house of bondage. I hope you're starting to see just how crazy this is and just how quickly Israel had forgotten how good God had been to them. In fact, they were acting a lot like the Egyptians that God had delivered them from. If you remember, the Egyptians had all sorts of gods. In fact, the Egyptians, they worshipped a false goddess whose idol had the head of a cow named Hathor. So here we see that Israel is acting just like the Egyptians that God delivered them from. This was not supposed to happen. And not only were they worshiping it, but they brought offerings unto it. They danced around it. This was such a sad scene for Israel. So while all this was going on at the bottom of the mountain, remember, God was talking with Moses and God knows everything. God sees everything. And even though he was talking with Moses, he saw all that was going on at the bottom of the mountain, and it made God angry. So much so that God was ready to consume all of Israel for this. And he had every right to do so. Again, God was the one that had brought them out of Egypt. God had protected them and, and provided for them. God had done so many wonderful things for Israel, and Israel seemingly just turned their back on God and said, I don't want to serve you anymore. And God had every right to consume all of Israel. But Moses pleaded before God and said, God, please don't do that. And God heard Moses' prayer and decided that he wasn't going to consume all of Israel, but he was going to give them a consequence, which we'll talk about that here in a little bit. So upon hearing what was going on at the bottom of the mountain, Moses ran down the mountain as fast as he could. And as he got closer to the bottom of the mountain, he started hearing this sound. Was it the sound of war? No, Moses knew that there was one wild party that was going on at the bottom of the mountain. So he got down to the bottom of the mountain, and if you look in Exodus chapter 32, verse 19, we'll see what Moses did when he got to the bottom of the mountain. Again, Exodus 32, verse 19. You should still be uh, in ex have your Bible open and be in Exodus chapter 32, verse 19. It says, And it came to pass, as soon as he came nigh unto the camp, that he saw the calf, and the dancing, and Moses' anger waxed hot, and he cast the tables out of his hands and break them beneath the mount. So these two stone tablets that God gave him that had the Ten Commandments on them, Moses was so angry that he cast them on the ground and they broke. 
And then look what it goes on to say in verse 20. And he took the calf which they had made and burnt it in the fire and ground it to powder and strawed it upon the water and made the children of Israel drink it. So he took this golden calf that they made and burnt it with the fire and ground it to a powder and then cast it upon the water and made the children of Israel drink it. He was so angry. He was so upset. Then look what it goes on to say. Verse 22, listen carefully to what Aaron says about this. And Aaron said, let not the anger of my Lord wax hot. Thou knowest the people that they are set on mischief. For they said unto me, make us gods which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what has become of him. And I said unto them, Whosoever hath any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it me, then I cast it into the fire, and there came out this calf. Here we see that Aaron told a straight-up lie. First off, the first thing that Aaron did, instead of owning up to this decision that he made, is he blamed the Israelites. Again, there in verse 23. I'm sorry, verse 22, he said, You know the people that they are set on mischief. Again, blaming the Israelites for this. And then he goes on to say that he gathered the gold from all the people and threw the gold into the fire and out came this calf. Is that what happened? I hope you remember that Aaron was the one that made it. In fact, go back with me to verse 4 of chapter 32. Let's just remind ourselves how this went down. Verse 4. And he, again, he being Aaron, received them at their hand. And this is talking about the gold. And fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. So Aaron was the one that made this golden calf. Aaron was the one that took the gold and fashioned it and graved this golden calf. He didn't just cast the gold in the fire and this golden calf came out of it. This was such a childish lie. In fact, it made me think of some of the things that that some of my young students would say when they did something wrong and some of the just the childish excuses that they would make. It was clear here that Aaron was being very childish. He wasn't owning up to this sin that he had done. In fact, if you go back, Um, There in Exodus chapter 32, I want to remind you what Moses said. When Moses, uh, verse 21, said unto Aaron, What did this people unto thee, that thou hast brought so great a sin upon them? Moses clearly called this a great sin. And it was a great sin. And Israel should have owned up to the fact that it was a great sin. Aaron should have owned up to the fact that it was a great sin. And we see that that's not what happened. So after Moses had taken this golden calf and cast it into the fire and and ground it into pieces and, and, and threw it on the water and made the Israelites drink it, and after Aaron had given this childish lie about what happened, Moses stood up and asked a very important question that all the Israelites would need to answer. Look at verse 26 of chapter 32. It says, Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. So here, after Moses asked who was on the Lord's side, the Bible says that the sons of Levi gathered themselves unto him. And God commanded um, the Levites to to kill all of those who had worshipped the golden calf. And the Bible says that 3,000 people died. And then, after 3,000 people died from, from this, God sent a plague upon the Israelites as a punishment for their sin. The Bible doesn't say what the plague was, but it was probably some kind of illness. And then Moses went back up the mountain and asked God for forgiveness. The Bible says that God forgave the Israelites, but they were still going to have to live with the consequences of their sin. God said he would no longer go before the people and that he would send an angel to watch over them. So Moses came back down the mountain. He told the people what God said. And the Bible says that Israel was devastated. Again, their sin had cost them God's visible nearness. And then Moses went into his tent, and and God's pillar of cloud stood outside the tent. The Bible says that God and Moses talked like they were friends. And God was pleased with Moses' obedience 
And Moses pleaded before God, and God had mercy on Israel. And God agreed to go before the people to the promised land for Moses' sake. God told the Israelites that he would drive out the other nations who lived in the promised land. But God strictly warned them to be very careful not to fall into the idol worship of all those nations that he was going to drive out. So here we see in our, in our account today that God was very merciful with Israel. And God's very merciful with us. You know, we very easily could point the finger at Israel and, and say, how could they do such a thing? But you know, just like Israel, we are prone to forgetting the God who's been so good to us. You know, in junior church, we've talked plenty of times about how <clears throat> anything that we put before God is a God in our life. We've talked about how video games can be a God in our life. We've talked about how spending time with our friends can be a God in our life. We've talked about how watching YouTube videos and watching TV can become a God in our life if we spend more time doing that than we do spending with God. We need to be careful that we keep God first in our lives. We need to be careful that we don't forget about all the great things that God has done. And can I just remind you that God has been so good to all of us. God's given us all a house to live in. God's given us all a bed to go to sleep on at night. God's given us clothes to wear. God's given us food on our table. And God's, can I get, remind you of this, God sent his son to die on the cross for our sin, that we might have eternal life if we believe on Jesus Christ. And God's done so many wonderful things for us. Let us never forget how good God has been to us. And let's take time to thank God for his goodness in our lives. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you that you are merciful with us, just as you were with Israel. We thank you, Lord, that uh, even though we are prone to forgetting you, Father, that uh, you're still provide for us. You're still so good to us. Help us, Lord, not to forget how good you are. Help us to spend time praising you. Lord, I pray that in all of our lives that we wouldn't put things before you, that we would keep you first in our lives and help us to be all that you would have us to be, not just to be hearers of your word, but doers. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and your church.